Welcome to the Connect Church Discipleship Podcast. We're back at the beginning now of season three. This is season three, episode one. And if you haven't listened to the trailer, yeah, it's exciting. If you haven't listened to the trailer yet, make sure you go back and do that. Uh, I am joined once again by our lead pastor, Pastor Frank Overo. Thank you, sir. Yeah, of course. For being us. Happy to be here. He's got the Yankees hat on, intentionally trying to provoke me uh, in this video. So we'll see about the fruit of the spirit if that happens. And that is our topic for this season as we're gonna talk about the Holy Spirit's work in our lives. And so in this season, there'll be three um, series. And so you listen to a series, go meet with your disciple and so forth. You kind of know the deal uh, by now. But uh, the Holy Spirit's mentioned a lot. We talked mm -hmm. about it. You just preached on the Holy Spirit this, this yeah. past yeah. Sunday. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. link that in the description because it was really good and I think uh, flows a lot with what we were talking about here. Um, and we, we, we sing about the Holy Spirit, all, all this is kind of going on. And so. Would you just give us like a little bit of definition, you know, who, who is the Holy Spirit? How would you explain that to, to somebody? Yeah, the Holy Spirit is the part of church that we often try to pretend like it doesn't exist. But like if you read scripture, he does. Um, and you see him even from the beginning, right? In Genesis, the Spirit hovered over the water. And then we know that the Spirit is the fulfillment of the promise from Jesus, that we would have the presence of God with us at all times. And I think... Um, Again, the church has made the Spirit a lot of different things, but I, but I think it's, again, this is a gift, right? If you read all throughout Scripture, having access to the presence of God was something that everybody wanted, and they often couldn't have. But for us, it's the, the Holy Spirit is God dwelling with us and us having the presence of God at all times. Yeah. No, I love what you said about God dwelling with us because I think a lot of times— unintentionally, we can forget that the Holy Spirit is God. Yep. And uh, I remember someone saying to me once, like, the Holy Spirit's not God's sidekick. Like, you know, go, yeah. go gadget arm yeah. kind of yeah, 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 yeah. thing, yeah, you know, yeah, go, yeah. go fix this kind of mm -hmm. thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to know the Spirit deeply, right? Yep. Um, and and, and we're, we're in this, uh, I'll just kind of throw some theology for us. Like, we, we talk about the word of the Trinity, right? Mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Spirit. And yep. Trinity is a word that we don't find in Scripture, mm -hmm. but certainly the concept uh, is there, and if it's a tough concept to understand, join the club. Right? Like, like people yeah, wrestled yeah. with this for for a long time, but um, we talk about how God is three distinct persons mm -hmm. with distinct roles, not one person who shows up mm -hmm. in three different ways. So, like for both of us, we're both fathers, we're both husbands, yep. we're both yep. sons, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yet we're still one person. Yeah. Uh, but but the, the analogy kind of breaks down there, right? Because God is three persons, and He comes and and, and He He operates in these functions as Father, Son, and Spirit. In fact. We see that uh, in Jesus' water baptism. Would you read that scripture for me, Matthew yeah. chapter uh, 3? Well, one second. I'll yeah. just say, someone also said it this way, and, and it was helpful for me. Maybe it's helpful for one of you. If like The Trinity is kind of like an egg. Mm. You have the shell, the egg whites, and the yolk. You can take them apart, but they also collectively make up the egg, and they all yeah. have distinct parts, yeah. um, but they're all part of it. And someone said that in a click, so maybe like it helps that. one of you. Um, but yeah, Matthew 3, verse 16 says, When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Great. So within that scripture, we see Father, Son, and Spirit kind of all working simultaneously. And so one of the other aspects of the Trinity is it's not that the Spirit is greater than Jesus or Jesus greater than the Spirit or the Father, right? Wait, yeah. They're all God. This, yeah. this, is, this is all God, right? And mm -hmm. so they're each to be valued. Yeah. Um, and then the hard part of this, which I think is the part that people wrestled with for centuries, is this is not three different gods, though, yeah, right? And yeah, that's kind yeah. of the mystery. Mm -hmm. um, and the analysis, uh, the analogy that I've heard before that I thought it has helped is the, the parakesis dance. They said that the early church fathers and mothers would use this to kind of describe the spirit. And it's, it's a dance from that day where you need three people to do it, and they'd move in unison, give and take. And they said that, I, I'm not a dancer, so, so you know, it, it wouldn't look good if I do it, yeah. but... Um, just the idea that they would kind of be, these three people would become a blur. You wouldn't be able to tell who's doing what because they were in such unison. And that's a great analogy uh, for, for the Trinity, right? It's sometimes like, is that the Spirit doing that? Is that Jesus? Is that the Father? Well, it, 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 maybe it's all of them, right? And, yeah. and they're kind of, kind of working together in that. So with that being said, does it matter if we actively think of the Holy Spirit as being God? Like, do we need to keep that at the forefront of our mind or that's really not a big issue? Yeah, I think, I think we do need to remember the Holy Spirit is God, because if not, I think it, we can discredit him very quickly, right? Like, I mean, we've grown up in Pentecostal circles where this is something we think is important. And I think one of the biggest things I've always heard is like, it's uncontrollable, it's weird, it doesn't make sense. 
And so like, if I don't view it as God, it's easy to make yeah. those things the most important thing. Where again, if I remember he is God, then I also know like, all right, if he's God, I have to form a theology around yeah. this. No, absolutely. I, I love that. And, you know, we, we do need that theology, right? To know mm -hmm. that. So this way we could actually recognize it. Yeah. And, and that's, that's actually the next question we'll talk about. How, how do we become better or how do we grow in recognizing the Spirit's work, right? Because mm -hmm. there'll be things that are said to the Spirit that are not the Spirit, and, mm -hmm. and, and like there's like those two extremes, like yeah. everything's the Spirit, nothing's yeah. the Spirit. Yeah. How, how do we grow in that? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a good question. And, and I feel like that's going to be a lifelong process of like trying to figure that out. Um, but I think for me, it's more of like, I recognize the Spirit more, I think, in stillness and slowing down. Um, and then when my life is busy and out of control, I'm often like, this is God. But really, it's like I just don't even have time to hear God. And so it's slowing down enough to hear it. In my life, when I have slowed down, I, I hear God in the Spirit speaking me and, and leading me. You know, even I'm a pastor because of a moment at a retreat where I slowed down and God nudged my heart towards ministry where yeah. that was nothing I thought about. So, And for me, I often find it's like something I would never think of on my own. Mm. Like, this is not me at all. Yeah. But but it's where God is speaking and leading me. So, so definitely that idea of making some space. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Like, and making sure that we're taking that time to like even just pause. Hey, what's the Spirit trying to do? Mm -hmm. you're like you're almost anticipating that yeah. the Lord's going to speak in yeah. some way. Yeah. Cool. All right. So um, a lot of times what I've seen happen is people tend to equate their feelings with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? And that, that's not to say that the Spirit can't work mm -hmm. through feelings and things like that. But... Is that a good way for us to measure if the spirit is working? And if so, why should we continue that? Or is there better ways? You know, what does that kind of look yeah. like? Yeah, I think we say a lot, right? Feelings are good indicators, but they're not what we base our life off of. You know, even for me, if there are periods where I'm just feeling anxious or overwhelmed, again, it's an indicator that something may be off in terms of how I'm, I'm listening to the spirit, right? Jesus promises peace and strength for what I need. So if I'm not feeling that, then again, for me, it's a time to maybe slow down and see what the Spirit might be speaking to it. Uh, but, but again, right, there are times where, where there's an overwhelming feeling in my soul mm -hmm. that I know it is the Spirit yep. nudging me. And so I would say, again, often those feelings are just very different than things I would feel naturally, right? Mm -hmm. Like to be more loving towards someone or yeah. more gracious. Like those are not things I normally Sure. Yeah, man, I love that because I, I think one of the challenges sometimes is the extremes we could run to, right? Like we could look at like the spirit can only move this way. And, and, and for someone, they might say, OK, when I feel those feelings, that's the only way the spirits can move for someone else. It's only when I read scripture that the spirit's going to move or my pastor's talking or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, so we have to walk this tension of we want it to be scriptural, but we also don't want to put the spirit in, in a box. Right. Yeah. And, and we have to acknowledge there's. There's uncomfortability here, yeah. right? There's yeah. going to be times, like, if the Spirit is genuinely working in our life, there's going to be times that that's going to push us, and it's not going to feel great. And, and an interesting passage I want to bring up, and we won't read it, but I'll just summarize Ezekiel 4. Um, they're at a time where, like, Ezekiel is supposed to represent a siege against Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and God's like, hey, get a clay tablet and draw on it, and, you know, a picture of Jerusalem, set up siege works against it. It's like almost like a kid that's making, like, a little a war zone, you know, imagery kind of thing. And he used to lay on his side for 390 days to represent the sin of the people of Israel and 40 days to the sin of the people of Judah, right? He's told what he can eat. He's supposed to cook over, uh, over human dung. He, bar he bargains that down to cow dung, right? Um, and you read that chapter, and I'm like, that can't be the leading of the Spirit, right? You're, you're like, no, man, Ezekiel just, he's out of his mind. Like, he, he ate some bad food, whatever. He got dehydrated, right? And so our natural inclination, I think, sometimes is like, if the Spirit is asking us to do something that, either pushes us beyond where we're comfortable or might seem off to others, like we quickly want to, want to throw it out, but we, we, we can't, right? That can't be the litmus test for us. And so um, we got to become people that could be comfortable with, with being uncomfortable. So I, I'm going to throw a random question here. We didn't put this in, in, the, in the notes, but how can you tell if something's making you uncomfortable, how can you tell whether that's the spirit actually doing that or that is your own self doing that? Yeah, and I think that's just an interesting point. I think for me, one of the things I'm realizing is how much I do enjoy my comfort mm -hmm. and how God often calls me to the uncomfortable. Um, and so it's a good question. How do I know the difference? Um, I, I think that there are just some things where it's like, 
you know, like eating makes me comfortable, right? But at the end of the day, like that's not really deep or life giving. But like, again, it's like, I'm walking through the grocery store, I see somebody and I feel like God is nudging me to see if I can get a conversation. Mm -hmm. going. Naturally, I'm not thinking. About it. Yeah. And nor do I really probably even care, like to be honest. Sure. But like if God is stirring that in me, then I often know, okay, this is uncomfortable, I think, for something deeper, yeah. of possibly yeah. introducing the gospel to them, but also something I'm not thinking of yeah. on my own. And, and right, I also see this could bring God's kingdom to yeah. earth. Yeah. And so it's probable. Absolutely. I love that. I love what you said at the end about being able to connect that to the kingdom, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and kind of using it as a test. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk more about the Holy Spirit in our next couple episodes. We learned today who the Holy Spirit is. He's God. He's working in our life. Um, there's going to be moments where that's uncomfortable, but that's good. Ultimately, that's for our benefit. But uh, it's a little fun question just to get you know uh, know you a little better before we go today. Uh, what's the most beautiful place that you have ever visited or seen in person? Mm -hmm. So I, I was torn. So too quick. Tuscany, like the Tuscan mountains in Italy, incredible. And then two, um, went to Acadia National Park in Maine. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was like one, I think it's precipice hike that's like 1,200 feet up the mountain. I don't do heights, so like didn't do that. But there was this, a safer one called Beehive. And so you get to the top, it's like 600 feet, and you look out and just see like the shoreline in Maine and, and some of the mountains, and it was it was breathtaking. So it's awesome. I, I'm struggling with how Beehive is the safer place. Uh, just <laughs> <laughs> the name let me tell you, it wasn't that safe still. <laughs> It's probably the most intense thing I've done in my life. About like 500 feet up, you're free climbing up the side of a mountain. I probably wouldn't do it again, but I didn't know what I was heading to, so maybe I'd be terrified. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. This is a good spot. Text your disciple or just let them know, hey, here's something I learned, or maybe here's a question I have about the Holy Spirit, and come back next time uh, as we look at more of who has the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone.